we just dropped through GT Auto Garage and uh, today we're going to be giving them our, uh, well if you can hear us over the sound of a 1300 horsepower GDR, we're going to be dropping our Haltech Elite um, and we're going to be doing a back to back comparison, one sec, check this. Thing is in mental. Anyway, there's a little chairman meow here. He's overseeing the operation. He's not a huge fan of all the noise, but we'll see how we go once this is in. And while we're at it, um, we're going to be installing um, an O2 uh, CAN bus sensor as well. We've got uh, the Haltech gauge. This uh, will allow us to run. Uh, you can display up to four things on this screen at once. So you can display uh, things like boost. Um, the uh, lambda control and all that. We've also got the O2 sensors here. This would not be possible to plug it into the VVTi loom without this special piece here from Boomslang Fabrication. Um, this means that we can plug it straight into the factory loom. That will be happening soon. So in the next few days, we should have a dyno run that gives us, um, I don't know, what do you guys reckon it'll make? I'm not sure, we'll guess we'll see. Um, hopefully we can get somewhere close to 300 kilowatts, I guess, I don't know. While we're here, I'll show you what's on the dyno. I'm probably just getting in the way of other Dave. But on the dyno at the moment, we've got this puppy, which we're gonna be re-dynoing again. That's our 86, last time we put out 1100 horsepower. There's a GTR, which we're having some dramas with at the moment, so, like I said in the last video, race car life. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm probably pissing people off. And uh, also, you might notice that we have started to set up the stance parts air cup suspension system. So it's got a uh, uh, air compressor and an air tank, and we've managed to mount it down real low. Um, and then, as you saw in um, now, well, at the MCA video that we've got, it's actually got the stance cups sitting on top of the MCA suspension. So that'll give us, this is the static ride height at the moment, but we get about two inches of extra movement on the back and front. So this Dave will have that installed, I don't know, in the next hour or so, right? Yeah, wait till it's dark. <laughs> do my best work in the dark. <laughs> Alrighty, cool. Well, we'll, uh, these boys want to leave, so I'm going to pack up for the night and uh, we will chat to you when this is on the dyno. Alright, so as you saw, we hit the limits of the factory ECU in the last setup. Um, that was with, uh, I think we made 250 kilowatts at the wheels and we ran a 12.9 second quarter. Alright, here it is on the dyno. Is that right? 250. to Haltech, we've got a Haltech Elite 2500. Um, so that's the ECU that's going into it now. Um, Dave here is halfway through putting it all together. And so if we peek inside, it's a bit of a mess in there at the moment, but. So it basically, so this is a bit of a unique setup. So we ended up um, hitting up Boomslang um, and have you, you've dealt with those guys before as well, haven't you? Yep. And yeah. so, what effectively they just provide a patch plug in, loom. A patch loom plug into your factory. So yeah. Yeah, because unfortunately, Haltech doesn't supply a loom for this particular model. They do for the older VB, the older JZA80, non -VBT. but the non VVT ones, yeah. which meant that this special pinout. And I guess that would have saved a couple grand worth of uh, wiring, because yeah. that's quite a complex uh, yeah. so setup there. Yeah. Um, so that green setup that you can see there, um, that's from Boomslang Fabrication over in um, America. And they customized that, they did a few extra things for us. I think it was uh, fly-by-wire fly -by -wire yeah. because we've got the hypertune intake manifold. 
Um, so from factory, they don't run a traditional fly-by-wire, which yeah. I'll touch on in a second. Yeah. But also, we will make a few other adaptations. I think we we're on sequential ignition, and there was something else you added to it. I think flex sensor. Flex sensor. So basically, you can spec. You you tell them what you want. Yep. And they'll just if if it's in within their scope, they'll yep. just add breakout wiring to yep. whatever you want. And they provided a circuit diagram and everything yeah, with they, um, it's a full. Um, Excel spreadsheet of every pin out yep. factory to whatever ECU elite on the, in this case and um, yeah very simple very straightforward gotcha gotcha and um, so what this will eliminate all of the the factory limitations fuel cut speed cut boost cut Correct. and uh, a lot more adjustability since I suppose you did had no adjustability before Zero adjustability, <laughs> yeah. all right cool now there was one little trick which I know we're going to sort of keep it gets a bit complicated. All right, so ever since I've had this particular Super, I've had quite a few in my time. All the old models, so pre-97, pre-98, the traction control was so atrocious. You'd literally like, uh, as soon as it had spin the tires, the car would basically stall on you and you'd be crawling out of an intersection. This particular model actually had a surprisingly decent traction control and we were wondering why. And it turns out what it is, is it doesn't have two throttle bodies. This is an actual actuator for what? It's a stepper motor controller or something? No, so, that's basically, it's still mechanical to, so the mechanical section starts about there. So yeah. from there to there is yeah. mechanical, yeah. but the rest is a full, like it's an electric throttle body. Yeah, because I mean, I, I had someone say that they'd uh, put a aftermarket ECU in it, and then when they were pressing the throttle, this was moving, but the throttle body wasn't moving at all. So that's something to um, note if you ever work on a VVTi one. We're not gonna go through exactly how we got around it. We've just done a hack job temporarily because we're gonna be running full fly-by-wire later on. Now, let's see what we can actually get out of this now that it's, uh, basically we're just gonna run it up on the dyno, yep. same boost we did before the Haltech, and then see what you can get out of it and adjust timing a little bit, yeah. I suppose, and then um, turn the boost up and see what sort of uh, power we can get out of the stock Supra injectors. with the stock injectors, which is, Pretty much yeah. where we are now. <laughs> We're going to be starting to limit that anyway. So, all right, let's get it onto the dyno with the Haltech. Thanks to Haltech and Boomslang for this latest installment. So, dyno time. And then after dyno, I reckon we'll take it to the quarter again. What do you reckon? Still run 12s? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so the ECU is in now. It's on the dyno. And uh, we're going to see what it can do on low boost, which is 10 pound wastegate uh, pressure. And then after that, we're going to crank the boost up a little bit and see what we can do before it runs out of fuel. So then after that, we'll get to the next stage of mod. So this is a stage one, Haltech in, O2 wideband, all that sort of stuff. And uh, we'll see what we can do on the stock fuel system. So we've done low boost, which is wastegate, and we've done the max that we can get on the fuel system. What did we What did we get? And we happy with that? Um, we ended up at what did we end up at? 330 kilowatts at like 14 pounds. Yeah. And um, and we ended up, I'd say, just on 300 kilowatts on um, wastegate. Waste, yeah. Um, but again, we're out of fuel. So our um, injectors fuel system is at its limit. Yeah. Sweet. Let's see what we can do at the track. Mm. Awesome. What do you reckon? The only thing is now we've got a variable. We've got the suspension done. So it's going to be. You had the tyres. You had the tyres on last time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what did you do last time? Twelve nine at one oh eight. I reckon twelve one. Really? That much difference? Wow. That's a. 
That's a, that's a pretty optimistic goal there. Come on. Good, oh. dri good driver in the seat. Yeah, well, it's me though, so. I'm going to put the drag radio was on. So that's the same tire we ran at the last tr drag day, so that should give us the same amount of traction. The old tires would have been useless. Don't forget it's got new brakes too. <laughs> Attempt number two. First time, our best time was 12.9. Let's see if we can beat that. All right, what do we got here? Oh, dude, definitely in the spot. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, it's all hyper tune intake. Um, 1J? 1J of built. Um, six boost Manny. TDX 35 HR. Um, and the gearbox was uh, 154. Oh, 154. And um, what power are you saying you're putting down? I believe it's like 570. 570 on the wheels. Sweet. That's it for us tonight. We had three runs. Uh, first one was our best with a 12.14 at 116 mile an hour. Uh, 60 foot time was 1.8. Uh, the second run didn't do so well. I lifted off because it felt like the car was running a bit weirdly half track. I thought it was slipping the clutch or something, but it turned out there was it went into in home mode or something like that. I, I don't know what happened. Um, could have leaned out a bit because we're at the max of the, the factory fuel injectors at 100% duty cycle. They put a bunch of protections in there to stop us from launching the engine. Uh, so we got a 12.4 on that run, um, and on the last run, um, we got a great 60 foot time of 1.7, um, and the quarter was a 12.19 at 114, so a bit slower. Uh, but that was some good runs that we had against the Sylvia. Um, so yeah, that was be some interesting to see the footage from that. Uh, that thing completely mauled me at half track. He got 132 mile an hour or something at an 11.5, so that was that was pretty astounding. But that's what we've been able to do with this. It's still, uh, no, we're running a little bit more than factory boost now, but aside from that, same mods as last run, which uh, we got a 12.9. So we've shaved off 0.8 of a second on our quarter mile, and we're doing a nine mile an hour faster than we were last week um, with our previous setup. And that's all thanks to the Haltech. So there we go, wearing my Haltech shirt. So yeah, thanks very much to Haltech and uh, GT Auto Garage. So next time we'll be out at the track is gonna be when we've got some serious mods and we'll see if we can put into a 10. So we'll see you at that right, time. So we're back at the shop now. The Supra made it back here. It was limping home, uh, kept restarting. There was something wrong with the fuel system. Uh, issue with the fuel controller, no big deal. So we managed to make it back to the shop. We're gonna put it to sleep with his friends. Here we've got the 1000 horsepower GDR and a 600 horsepower 180 SX time tack car. Next week, hopefully, we'll have the, the 86 in the garage as well. So between all four cars, we should have somewhere close to 3,500, nearly 4,000 horsepower between all of them. After this one's finished, of course. So the Supra, next on the list. So in this particular episode, we've seen we've just chucked the Haltech Elite 2500. That was attached to the vehicle using a Boomslang engineering loom. That meant that we were able to eliminate any dicking around with... Uh, patch leads and, and all sorts of stuff like that. So that essentially allowed us to plug and play without having to go to the effort of getting a guy out and spending at least a day pulling apart all the factory wiring, 
It's very messy and this solved a lot of our problems and they were extremely helpful. Um, there was some diagnosing to do this morning so they were very helpful and responsive. They were able to fix up some problems that we had. Can't thank the guys from Boomslang enough. Now, our quarter mile time today was a 12.1 at 117 mile an hour. The 60 foot time was a 1.7 which was thanks very much to these Mickey Thompson ET streets. Now they were supplied by Tuna's Edge in Melbourne, so thank you to those guys. You can see they're still rubbing here, so we've taken a little bit out of them. So we're gonna need to get these guards flared when the body work gets done. So thanks again to Tuna's Edge for those. And um, like I said, can't thank the guys from Haltech enough and the guys from Boomslang as well. And of course, our favorite people in the world, GT Auto, because they spent pretty much the whole day trying to fix some problems, like I said, that this was having. Hopefully the fuel system issue is not going to be too bad. Um, we are already got uh, a bigger fuel system for it. We've got uh, twin in tanks. Uh, that's all we're going to be doing for this one. Until next week, we're going to start pulling the engine apart. We're going to put cams in it. Um, and we've got a stash of things. Let's check this stuff out. Some of the goodies that we've got waiting to go in. And uh, there's a whole lot more than this. This is just some of the stuff we've got for this car. So over the next few episodes, you'll start to see it get seriously modified. Ooh, look at that. What do we got there? Something thanks from GCG. Uh, we've got seats, we've got Kelford cams. Obviously we put the hull ticket already. There's Kelford. We've got a front bar. And the hood over there, carbon fiber TRD hood. Ah, there's all sorts of stuff. And two JZ, no shit. But anyway, I won't bore you anymore. So what do you guys reckon next time? Let's see what we can get out of this. I reckon we're gonna go for somewhere north of 600 horsepower at the wheels. And next time we go to the strip, I reckon we'd run a 10. I said a 10 second car, not a 10 minute car. Hey, pop the hood. Pop the hood? Pop the hood. Two JZ engine, no shit. And what did I tell you? I retract my previous statement. You know what? This will decimate all after you put about 15 grand in it or more if we have to overnight parts from Japan. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, catch you later.